Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedeli still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On Daybreak with Pedeli and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. us. Tonight on FBC News, visa-free entry for Chinese nationals has nothing to do with increased illegal activities involving Asian nationals, says immigration. Police recover some stolen new-look bills. And alarming drowning statistics could have been reduced. Welcome to FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Immigration Director Major Nemani Vuniwanga says the visa-free entry for Chinese nationals is not to be blamed for the increased illegal activities involving Asian nationals. The comment is in light of the recent increase in crime involving Chinese nationals. And as Mika Longa reports, the Immigration Department has even sent some nationals back who have been caught on the wrong side of the law. Chinese nationals have allegedly been involved in various illegal activities in the country from prostitution, gambling to multi-million dollar drug cartels. Notable cases include the story of the infamous mafia lady, the amphetamine find at a Lodala Beach factory, the unresolved killings at Oelanda in Lamy, gambling and the recent alleged human trafficking case involving three women from Thailand, four Chinese businessmen are on trial in the high court in Suva. It happens in every country. Appearances have already been conducted on some. Um, Major Vunuwanga adds none of the immigrants have come into Fiji without their knowledge. We cannot say that uh, all uh, that they came in by illegal means. Since December 2007, people from China and Hong Kong have been exempt from visa requirements, but according to the authorities, it's wrong to claim that the policy has opened the doors for the wrong people. We, can, we cannot uh, blame the, put the blame issue on the, the no visa requirement eh, for, for, uh, for Asians. If that is happening, uh, it has to be uh, proven. According to Bunuwanga, his department has and will continue to investigate anyone suspected of being involved in illegal activities. The issue is for us to nip it in the bud. If it is really happening, we have to investigate it, uh, into it. The immigration director adds his officers will continue to be vigilant on our borders and won't hesitate to send people back if they step out of line. Mikalonga, FBC News. Four people are being interrogated in relation to their alleged involvement in the theft of 500 new-look $100 bills. And police say more than $30,000 of the bills have been recovered. Spokesperson Anane Sora says the special task force team has so far managed to ascertain that there was an alleged security breach by a security officer while escorting the money from the central bank to the bank in question. One of the suspects was arrested yesterday in Taviuni, along with his wife, with more than $12,000 in new currency in their possession. Another two security officers were arrested and found with a combined total of $17,400 new $100 bills found in their possession, while a third security officer was arrested in Nandi. Naisora says the special task force team is working around the clock to make more recoveries within the next 24 hours. She says if people come across the new look currency or have any information, they are to call 917 or their nearest police station or community post. Naisora says these notes have no monetary value, therefore it's, ad it's ad advisable to turn them in rather than trying to use them and end up getting caught on the wrong side of the law. The new notes come into circulation from the 2nd of next month. Looking at the vast increase in drowning statistics throughout the country, suggestions are now being made to add swimming lessons to the school curriculum. The drowning death toll now stands at an alarming 70, almost double what it was this time last year. And as Ritika Pratap reports, most cases are occurring in rural areas. Only, only schools around Suva have eight weeks of swimming lessons in their curriculum. In a survey conducted by a swimming group known as the Race Club Fiji some time ago, revealed that 90% of children who are in school don't know how to swim. If steps are not taken now, 
Drowning stats are expected to pass the 100 mark in a one-year period. The Ministry of Education has to get uh, people, uh, swimming instructors or you know, people in uh, water safety, to go out and do this, uh, the same program that they're doing for the sewer schools and go out to the schools in the rural and do the same thing but use the rivers and the sea, um, you know, and creeks. Drowning in rural areas top the list and the lack of facilities could be a cause. However, William Takayawa says there are other options. Some schools, they have one river and there's like four schools. They can use maybe a side of the river to conduct this, uh, this program. Um, I think the, the thing is really up to the, the parents um, and the school, you know, school committees to get, uh, to get together and uh, try and formulate something. Swimming clubs mostly teach competitive swimming and it's the parents, guardians and the teachers who can make an impact. Learning how to swim and swimming fast is different from learning how to survive in waters and knowing the waters that you are swimming in. And also a uh, lack of understanding of where they are swimming. Uh, there's a couple of uh, drownings that happen where there's a lot of undercurrents. Uh, so, you know, basically the knowledge of where you swim is also important as, you know, knowing how to swim. Children are the highest number of victims of drowning in Fiji this year. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Another family is homeless after their house was razed to the ground yesterday. The incident at Tuatua Lambasa. The corrugated iron and timber house that belonged to a 59-year-old retired school teacher was fully engulfed when firefighters arrived at the scene. Estimated cost of damage is around $90,000, while the cause is yet to be determined. Young village men from the island seem to be earning a lot from beach demur and other delicacies from the ocean, mostly eaten by the Asian community. This morning, FBC News came across these young men selling their harvest to Asian buyers. They brought in close to 10 different varieties of beach dimmer with prices ranging between $5 a kilo to more than $100 for one beach dimmer this size. They say one full container of different varieties can earn them up to more than $2,000. These young men dive for these delicacies in the Suva, Tailevu and Lomaibiti waters depending on the condition of their licenses. Still to come on FBC News, TLTV optimistic of a good year ahead. Hi, I'm Sophie. And I'm Tix. You can join us on The Breakfast Show. Every weekday from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. right here on Today FM. That's right. Welcome back to FBC News. Now the Itoke Land Trust Board is optimistic of reviving the agricultural sector through the renewal of land leases. But for those farmers who want to get their land lease back or want to lease a piece of land, there is a criteria that you will now have to follow. Vosita Kote Wasawasa reports. The TLTB, through its Committee for Better Utilization of Land, has managed to renew agricultural leases to farmers. The committee had managed to extend 80% of land leases and will revive the agriculture sector as we look forward to the new year. Uh, as you know, this, uh, this is an area that, uh, that has been lacking behind and, uh, and there is a special government program for that uh, because the, um, the country needs farmers and uh, the country needs farmers who are secured. Uh, they have security of tenure uh, so that they can focus on their, on their work which is to cultivate 
Kitaki adds that this will augur well with the sugar industry as it tries to increase its sugar export, while landowners will get to benefit as well. And I'm glad that uh, we have managed to uh, live up to expectations of uh, other stakeholders, particularly government, in, um, in uh, participating in Sibul. And, um, and um, the landowners have also benefited tremendously from the scheme because the, there is a rent subsidy uh, scheme uh, which was proposed by government and implemented as an incentive to the landowners uh, for them to, to agree to renewal of leases, particularly the agricultural leases. Eh? Unlike the past, where there has been wastage of land that were not cultivated for agricultural purposes, this time around, farmers will be assessed as to how they will utilize the land leased to them. The scheme itself was supposed to be only for five years. So it's supposed to be ending in February 2013. But uh, government uh, in October has extended that. So the scheme will actually be operating for another three years, from 2013, 2016 to 2016. That is good news because that will give us enough time to process all the pending uh, leases and also we are also now extending uh, leases that are about to expire so one year two years three years so what we do is they have to the tenants have to surrender uh, and then we'll have to um, issue a new a new lease yeah? as the tltb looks forward to 2013 they remain optimistic that they will be able to assist the public as well as have mechanisms in place to ensure a smooth transition. Vosita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. While many are still enjoying the festive season, one man is already back on his farm to maintain physical fitness and plant what he says are his healthy foods. Mika Longa caught up with Paula Ravunga at his Delai Valley Lebu farm. Meet 68-year-old Paula Ravunga. He hails from Nakaseleka in Kandavu. He caught my attention from a distance while passing through Delay Valley Levu. Ravunga tells me he's been here for more than 30 years with his family. He was a builder, but now he's retired to what he enjoys most. Well, I'm here every day. The women tell me if I'm mad, this is the festive season, go and rest. I tell them the festive season will continue, but we are eating every day. Ravunga plants ndalo, cassava, yangona and vegetables. This tawbu of mine took me around his farm to show off the work of his old hands. Including this cassava patch and down there also all are mine. I had some yangona plants here but have shifted to another plot. I need to plant something in a day. I can't just lazy around at home. Ravunga tells me he's worried many are dying young because of their diet. Is encouraging people to eat fresh foods from the farm. I have discouraged purchase of meat in my home. I eat green vegetables every day, mostly boiled, not cooked in coconut milk. I feel fresh and I don't feel old because of the strength that I still have. Ravunga has this to say on young men. The young people nowadays waste the days and time. I tell those at home that today will never come back, so you have to work. And as long as he lives, this man from Kandavu says he will be here every day where he enjoys the most. Mikolonga, FBC News. Time for our look back of the year 2012. And tonight, Roland Corey takes us through stories that made the headlines in the month of November. November 2012 was greeted with a fire that destroyed a portion of the Naviti resort, forcing the resort to close. It was during this time also that Prime Minister Vorenge and Baini Marama ordered changes to the decree covering the Constitutional Commission after finding out that Watu Choni Manraiwiwi was part of a delegation making submissions to the Commission in what was said to be a direct contravention of the non-negotiable principles while he was a paid consultant for the Commission. November also marked 12 years since the attempted mutiny that saw three loyalist soldiers killed and to remember them, the Fiji military forces held a remembrance parade. French-owned Breadbank launched its services in Suva in November. Illegal scrap metal dealings made the headlines again on this month. FBC News exposed Waste Recyclers Limited, resulting in its containers getting seized by authorities on suspicion of containing stolen metal. And the owners weren't prepared to let our cameras in. 
after the story went to air, all scrap metal trade in non-ferrous materials was suspended, including copper, aluminium, nickel and other metals. This issue then became a matter of national security. The Itoke Land Trust Board made its intentions known, pay your arrears or have your homes dismantled. FBC News caught this on camera in Lotoka. Apparently this homeowner's arrears was in the thousands and no payments had been made. As always on this month of every year, family, friends, government officials and members of the diplomatic corps gathered at Battery Hill in Veuto to commemorate Remembrance Day dedicated to those that served and died for their country. President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau was reappointed for another three years. The Fiji Roads Authority announced it was laying off over a thousand of its workers as part of its outsourcing exercise. All Nations Church senior pastor Reverend Epeli Ratambadava was sent to prison for two years for sexual assault. Christmas came early for close to 250 airports Fiji Limited workers who got a pay rise announced by the Prime Minister. The government announced a $2.3 billion budget for 2013, an increase of 12 percent, equaling $249 million increase from this year's $2 billion budget. Priority was given to the upgrading of roads and bridges, pushing up the deficit to 2.8 percent from the 1.9 percent this year. November also marked the birth of FBC TV. The new television station turned one on the 25th. Fiji Times agreed to pay compensation to the Attorney General's office for an article ruled to be contemptuous. Fiji Times Limited, its editor Fred Wesley and former publisher Brian O'Flaherty were found guilty on one count of contempt of court. And finally work on the new Nosori bus stand and market officially started. Those are the stories that made the headlines in November 2012. Roland Kuroi, FBC News. And sports news ahead, more time needed for our national under-20 side. Nimbula, why are you Mr. Ben? And Lapa! I'm Maggie Kiroma, and I'm going to do it with a money chicken of a rumble cup. And a bull FM. Now we're doing a shilling. Path up with Shubho. Suba Suba ho Kushio Kamila. Na logo ki parva na dunia ka jamila panchiyon ka sangeet ho aur mausam albela mubarak ho aapko ye khoobsurat sabera har somwar se lekar shukrawar tak subah 6 se lekar 9 baje tak shamil rahe radio fiji 2 par hum safar mein ravin singh ke sath welcome to fbc sports while the Fiji Rugby Union has nine selectors working to pick a team for the next leg of the IRB World 7 Series, it seems the national coaches are not aware if they would work together. The Fiji 7s team underwent a fitness test last week and in another week a team for the next leg will be named. Shelvin Chand reports. Fiji 7's assistant coach Timothy Waningolo is hoping that selectors and coaches get a chance to sit down and finalize the team. I think they've got a coach panel and now, but I think those uh, coach will uh, uh, pick the team. And uh, I think us two will be there to maybe us last say too, I, I think so. But uh, we didn't sit with the, the coach panel now. Right. We didn't meet them. Maybe next week we'll be sit down. While Fiji has been changing its lineup for every leg, a former coach feels that changes are necessary, but it has to be done slowly. The system has been there all, all the time. Uh, the system of introducing new players um, to, to, to make um, uh, a lot of changes into the team. I think um, for the long run it will be good for it, but uh, you know, for, for winning and to win tournaments, uh, I still believe in you know to introduce um, a, a players you know slowly into, into. Meanwhile, a selector and local rugby mentor feels FRU's decision to have nine selectors may actually help. It's very good because we're giving our thing, uh, giving what is good, and uh, we all not stick to one uh, mind. I think this is very good. It's a very good uh, thing to do. 
The final 12-member team for the next leg will be announced on January 7th, and following that, the team moves into camp. Fiji has been pulled with Portugal, Australia and Scotland for the Wellington Sevens. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. When it comes to being champions, the Nandrongar rugby team knows about the commitment needed. The Stallions have raised the bar every year, and unlike other teams who have been gripped by the holiday mood, Nandrongar has been working for a better campaign next year. Shelvin Chand reports. Losing the Fairbrother Trophy to Suva has only made Nandronga hungrier for more rugby glory. Despite the holiday season with the festivities galore, the Stallions held its trials yesterday where players were chosen for an extended training squad. Uh, we were supposed to only select uh, 20, but based on the, uh, the interest that uh, shown by the players who came up uh, yesterday, then we have decided to extend the uh, the selection of uh, 40 players. Uh, this will be added to the current uh, 40 players that already we had for this year, and uh, from that then we'll uh, we'll have another assess assess uh, assessment uh, based on the players' uh, off-season programs. Nandronga has not only bred local champions, but the attitude towards the sport has seen many of its sons shine abroad. The management have laid down the rules and the players know that they have to follow them in order to make the team. We're giving them an opportunity to prove themselves uh, that they, uh, no, they really want to wear the white jerseys for the Nandronga colour for next year's uh, competition. Uh, from there, then they have to work on uh, through these off-season programs. The current Digicel Cup champions are hopeful that the die-hard attitude set now will be with the team throughout the season. Their aim is a successful defense of the Digicel Cup and wrestling the fair brother back to Nandronga. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. National Football Coaching Director Carlos Buzetti says the national under-20 side will face an uphill battle in the World Cup qualifiers to be staged in Fiji next year. Shelvin Chan spoke to the national mentor who says a lot of work has to be put in by both coaches and players. The national under-20 team gets back into camp next Friday and what lies ahead is intense training. Carlos Buzetti, who will be mentoring the two coaches assigned to the age-grade teams, says this is not enough time. Unfortunately, the basics missing in many of the players. We need to start from scratch again. We need to teach in things we should be not teaching when they come into the national teams. When they come into the national team, is to prepare a team and correct individual uh, technique, individual skills. It seems both players and coaches will have to be putting in extra effort. That mean because in the past we don't have academies, so we don't have uh, developed programs and so on. So we find ourselves with players that come in, they have their own ability, which is plenty. They have their own skills, which is plenty, but they don't know how to use it or, or develop it. So you need to have everything in consideration. It's not an easy, an easy task for us as coaches because they're coming in and then we need to teach everything. Like we've done in two weeks, now we will have two and a half months. So there is, however, a silver lining and there is still hope for future teams. Long, long term come, it's just only two and a half months. In two and a half months, we need to prepare. If the players come in prepared already, physically, mentally, tactically, and the skill and technique, I will have no problem. I will say, yes, we have enough time. Fiji will host its first international event with under 20 qualifiers, followed by the under 17 qualifiers. After the Oceania Nations Cup and the men's Olympic qualifiers were stripped off Fiji. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. Time for weather now and rain and thunderstorms were experienced all over this afternoon. The rain failed to cool Bar. The centre recorded 34 degrees at 3 this afternoon. Lambasa was close behind on 33, while Suva and Savu Savu were the coolest on 30. Not much change is expected for tomorrow's weather. It's fine in the morning and rain in the afternoon, accompanied by thunderstorms. And the further outlook is for brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers, 
isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon or evening. That was your FBC News for tonight. The headlines again. Visa-free entry for Chinese nationals has nothing to do with increased illegal activities involving Asian nationals, says the Immigration Department. Police recover some stolen New Look $100 bills. And alarming drowning st st statistics could have been reduced, according to a swimming club who believe children must be taught how to swim in all schools in Fiji. To the poll question now. Was Fiji well prepared for Tropical Cyclone Evan? To visit, go to www.fbc.com.fj. Results for this week's poll will be known in tomorrow's bulletin. And remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. Until tomorrow, good night. जो ढल जाए उसे शाम कहते हैं जो मिल ना सके वो जिंदगी होती है जो मिल जाए वो मौत होती है और जो कभी ना मिले उसे मोहब्बत कहते हैं हम आपको बताएं मोहब्बत की बात नहीं अच्छी लगती है आप लोग क्या करते हैं इंसान की जान ले लेते हैं उनको प्यार में फंसा लेते हैं हाय मिर्ची एफएमसी में